Addis Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia, lies in the central highlands at an altitude of 2,400 meters, making it the third highest capital city in the world. What appears as Addis Ababa was a camp, or rather a city of tents, in an open countryside without any of today's existing structures, permanent buildings, roads, etc., some years back. But when development finally began, change occurred fast and it becomes a town. The concept of a modern capital or city is a very recent practice in Ethiopia. Permanent seats of a government like Gondor proved to be untimely, as there was no infrastructure and well-organized government system to rule the country from a fixed capital. Over the preceding centuries, there had been many temporary capitals that rose and declined along with the greatness of their rulers, such as Yaha, Aksum, Lalibala, Gondor and Harar. In the 1870s, King Menelik needed a strong base from which to undertake the task of the reunification of the fragile and divided Ethiopia. The first site chosen was Ntoto. As a military base, Ntoto was ideally situated with a commanding view in all directions. Over a period of time, the natural wood supply was depleted because it was used for construction and fuel, which also depleted the water supply as well. As a result of this material shortage, Queen Taitu, the wife of Emperor Menelik, embarked on the exploration of the south of Ntoto Hill where she finally discovered the existence of the warmer, more fertile plains where hot springs at Finfinne provided bathing opportunities in natural hot water. In 1886, the court moved a few miles south to the site of the present-day city. Queen Taitu gave the settlement its name Addis Ababa, which literally means new flower. Addis Ababa which bears the imprint of many of these past developments today. It's a major metropolis with an estimated population of about 3 million. Various ethnic groups of Ethiopia with over 80 languages, dialects and cultures represented in the capital combined with the large number of foreign residents from all parts of the world the city enjoys cosmopolitan atmosphere. Its name Addis Ababa, which literally means new flower, is very ideal because it is a new city founded 123 years ago. The Addis Ababa's recent construction that gradually changed the city into a concrete jungle, city road network projects and an intensive urbanization process witness that Addis Ababa is at the flowering stage of its development. Moreover, a wide variety of tropical and temperate flowers, bushes and trees manage to coexist in perfect harmony, which make a gardener's paradise fitting its name, New Flower. I was very surprised when I came here. A very green city, I didn't expect that. Um, it's a very beautiful city and uh, very, very nice people. Um, in the first, uh, I found it a bit hard to find, uh, like, really good food uh, but then I didn't know where to go so uh, I have some nice colleagues at work who advised me so uh, I have my favorite uh, pizza restaurant Yummies and uh, I've been around MK's and uh, I've been in a lot of nice restaurants everybody's talking about an economical crisis but here it's like you see construction everywhere so there's a lot of uh, development going on and, and that makes me really happy and the biggest difference here is even if you walk around at night 10 o'clock midnight it's very safe it's very safe whether you're from Europe or you're from America or from Asia it doesn't matter you feel safe that's very important you're welcome my friend <laughs> wide three lined streets fine architecture a busting railway station glorious weather and the incongruity of donkey trains trotting along the Belvedere's make Addis Ababa the Ethiopian capital a delightful place to explore, a city of surprises characterized by remarkable diversity and contrasts. 
for me the most important as perception is the, the, the cultural aspect. You know, coming from West Africa, where you have many cultures living in the same country, where people speak, you know, different languages. Coming to Addis, watching the TV, listening to the radio, and looking at the newspapers, I really feel the strength of the Ethiopian culture. Of course, I know that there are many languages, but at least here, you have the feeling that you, you are in an African country where everything is rooted in the, in the, in the African culture. From its inception, Addis Ababa was clustered around two main centers, the place to the east and the market, with St. George's Church to the west. Together, they generated so much activity that the capital grew and developed rapidly. Around St. George Church, especially to the south in the area called Arada, or more commonly known as Piazza, after the brief Italian occupation of 1935, is one of the earliest urban centers of Addis Ababa and encompasses the Addis Ababa City Hall building and surrounding neighborhoods. Arada was not only a commercial center, but has also served as a cultural heart of Addis Ababa for over 100 years, although other areas of the city, especially the Bole area, have recently taken over the mantle in this regard. Each month, the skyline of Ethiopia's capital Addis Ababa changes as cranes add new heights to scores of office blocks and hotels and apartments sprout all over town. Two-lane streets mushroom into six lanes and fill with traffic. <laughs> All modern building models are now being constructed in Addis Ababa. You see building models of Europe here in Addis Ababa. There are also modern aluminium works. Building styles of the 18th and the 19th centuries of Europe are also available. We are being museums. The vehicles across the streets of Addis Ababa are also museums. From the old baby Fiat to the fancy hammer cars are driven in the city. Those who arrive in Addis for business or pleasure are taken by surprise when they see the modern airport terminal. Beginning from 6 o'clock in the morning, life continues to perpetuate as usual. People from different walks of life start the day to make their daily break. There is much to do and see within the capital whether at night, at a variety of nightclubs offering all manner of music from traditional Ethiopian to modern pop, as well as dancing, or by day. in Addis Ababa and one of the things we've really enjoyed about this trip is Ethiopian coffee. There are coffee bars dotted across the city. Also there are clubs playing traditional Ethiopian music. Well one night my cameraman Siobhan Rayson and I hit the town. This is what we experienced. <laughs> The food's 
great, the music's great, the dancing's great. Um, and one of the things I liked about the first time I came is that they come out and kind of dance with you in the audience, which is really fun. And I really like how they, um, uh, my friends were telling me that the dances are from different regions in Ethiopia, and that the, uh, I guess the decor is also from different regions. So it's nice, you, you know, you kind of get a little bit of everything. Wonderful. 